travels to Motijil from Uttara passengers euphoric. Ministers refute political motive behind arrest of BNP leaders. 51 killed in fresh Israeli offensive, Blinken meets a boss. Those were the headlines. This is ATN News. Good evening, viewers. I'm Nafisa Nawal with English Bulletin. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has reached Jeddah of Saudi Arabia to attend an international conference titled Women in Islam. Earlier, the plane carrying the Prime Minister and her entourage left Hadrat Shah Jalal International Airport at 9.14 a.m. on Sunday morning. The Prime Minister will visit Rauza Mubarak of Great Prophet Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the holy city Medina. She will head towards Jeddah from by train on Tuesday morning and address the conference on the same evening. She will hold several important bilateral meetings that include meeting with OIC Secretary General Brahim Taha and Executive Director of OIC Women Development Agency, Dr. Afnan al suhaibi in the sidelines of the main event, including a dinner that will be hosted in her honor. Later, the Prime Minister will leave Jeddah Holy City Mecca to perform Holy Umrah. She will leave Mecca for home on November 7. Metro Rail went to Motajil with the passengers for the first time on Sunday. The Metro Rail that left Uttara North Station at 7.30 a.m. reached Motajil at 8.01 a.m. A rush of passengers as well as onlookers was seen around the Metro Rail stations. Everybody seemed to be in a euphoric mood. There was a big queue of passengers at farm gate secretariat and motorjil stations for buying tickets. The passengers expressed satisfaction over the service of Metro Rail. Some people said they thought travelling on Metro Rail will be much safer due to seas called by BNP Jamaat. The Metro Rail will now run from Agagao to Motijil till 11.30 a.m. However, it will run from Uttara to Agagao till 8.30 p.m. The passengers demanded quick extension of timing from Uttara to Motijil. The second phase of 48-hour seas program called by BNP Jamaat Alliance is underway across the country amid sporadic incidents of violence. The central office of BNP in capitals Noya Bolton still remained locked. A huge number of policemen have taken position in front of the office. However, none of the BNP leaders and activists was seen around. The vehicle movement was low at in that of normal day, as many people did not bring out their private cars on safety reasons. Lesser number of passengers were seen at the inter-district bus terminals in Mohakali and Gaftali. Members of the law enforcement were kept on high alert at different spots of the capital. Even amid such security, incident of setting a blaze bus has taken place in capital's Maradea. Former Home Minister BNP leader Altaf Hussein Chaudhry has been arrested in Subversive Act case. Besides, Vice Chairman of BNP Barrister Shah Jahan Omar has also been nabbed in a similar case. Chief of the Detective Branch of Dhaka Metropolitan Police Harun Rashid said Jubudal leader Noa Nyon poured petrol on a bus in the capital during BNP's countrywide violence on October 28. The bus was set ablaze by another BNP leader, Ridoy. Although Ridoy, along with one other BNP leaders, have been arrested, no one involved in the arson attack wearing press vest is yet to be arrested. The DB chief said all the people involved in the arson attacks, including Jubodol leader Salauddin Tuku, have been identified. They will be arrested soon. There is no political motive behind the arrest of BNP leaders. Rather, arrest is taking place for their involvement in anarchy and violence. Members of the cabinet made the remark at separate events in the capital on Sunday. 
Minister for Road Transport and Bridges Obadu Khader alleged leaders and activists of BNP are now engaged in falsehood over the arrest. They are misguiding their foreign friends by saying they are being ousted from their homes. Terming BNP as a terrorist outfit, the Army League General Secretary reiterated there will be no dialogue with the party. He made the remarks at a program organized by Army League at its office in Kapla's Bangabundu Avenue on Sunday. Meanwhile, Law Minister Anisul Haq claimed BNP leaders are not being arrested on political grounds. Earlier at a briefing at the Secretariat, Information Minister Hassan Mahmoud said BNP is engaged in the attack on the people and arson terrorism in Taliban style. The government is determined to bring them to book. Fifty-one people were killed in Israeli bombardment on a refugee camp in al Malga refugee camp in Gaza. Several others were injured on Saturday night's attack. Meanwhile, Arab leaders met U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken to push an immediate Gaza ceasefire on Saturday. Blinken dismissed the idea, saying such a move would be counterproductive. It could only allow Hamas to regroup and encourage more violence through Israel attack. He made the observation while attending a meeting in Jordan discuss Hamas-Israel war. The meeting was attended by Saudi Arabia, Egypt, United Arab Emirates, Qatar and Jordan in Amman. During meeting, Blinken was under pressure from Arab leaders for immediate Gaza ceasefire. Israel continued offensive in Gaza despite calls for global ceasefire. UN-run schools, refugee camps, hospitals and even ambulances are not spared. There is no place in Gaza to run away for life. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas told Antony Blinken there must be an immediate ceasefire to the war in Gaza during a meeting with the top U.S. diplomat in the occupied West Bank on Sunday. According to international media, the meeting between Blinken and Abbas lasted less than an hour. There were no statements at the end of the meeting from the either parties. It was learned Abbas emphasized on a ceasefire like that of other Arab leaders. However, it is thought Blinken has rebuffed these requests and probably would do the same with Abbas. The mounting casualties in Gaza have put the U.S. diplomatic efforts under further scrutiny by its Arab allies, who have grown increasingly frustrated by the worsening humanitarian situation in the besieged Palestinian territory. Now a short break, we will be back soon with... Trial train reached Cox's Bazaar from Choptogram. <laughs> Nepal earthquake death toll stands at 157. You're watching 18 News. This is English Bulletin. The trial train from Chattogram reached Cox's Bazaar at 5 p.m. Sunday. The train left Chattogram for Cox's Bazaar at 9 a.m. It had eight bogies when it will be functional fully. It will take only three hours and 20 minutes to reach Cox's Bazaar from Chattogram. It will take eight hours, 10 minutes to reach Cox's Bazaar from Dhaka. Gradually, Silet and other districts will be connected to Cox's Bazaar through rail link. The train service from Dhaka to Cox's Bazaar will start with a new train. However, the two trains running from Chattogram to Cox's Bazaar or Cox's Bazaar to Chattogram route will have old bogies. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina will inaugurate the much-awaited newly built Chattogram Cox's Bazaar rail track on November 11. Now news around the world.
The toll now stands at 157. The 6.4 magnitude earthquake jolted a remote region of Nepal in Friday night. More than 100 people injured, officials said on Saturday. Videos from the spot showed crumbled facades of multi-storey brick houses with large pieces of furniture scattered. Social media posts showed locals digging through rubble in the dark to pull survivors from the wreckage of collapsed buildings. Security forces, including helicopter and ground troops rushed to assist the rescue efforts. Many people spent throughout Friday night on streets in fear. Nepal's Rukum and Jajarakot districts hit worst by the earthquake. Rescue operation could not be possible as expected as the roads were blocked due to landslides in many areas. Strong tremor was felt in different parts of Nepal as well as India. More news on Israel-Hamas conflict. Former U.S. President Barack Obama opened up with Israel-Palestine issue in an interview on the podcast Pod Save America Saturday. He said the October 7 attack by Hamas on Israel was terrible. Besides, what is being done against Palestinians now is beyond tolerance. Criticizing the way this war issue has been portrayed on social media, Obama said neither side is innocent. A way forward for the conflict is only possible if people acknowledge the truth and complexity of the situation. It is not as simple as it seems from outside. To take any constructive initiative, maintaining what on the surface may seem contradictory idea is required. What Hamas has done is horrific and there is no justification for it. At the same time, the occupation and what's happening to Palestinians is unbearable. To change this, it's required to speak, listen and understand the other side. Before becoming president, Obama made ambitious promises to resolve Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but he could not do it, even holding the office times. The ongoing Israel and Hamas conflict has diverted world attention from Ukraine-Russia war, said Ukrainian President Zelensky. However, EU Commission Chief Ursula von der Leyen said EU Commission proposed another 50 billion euros in aid for the reconstruction of Ukraine until 2027. On a key visit, Leyen made this comment at a joint press conference with Zelensky. Meanwhile, Zelensky added Moscow had already aimed to benefit from the Hamas-Israel conflict. The Russian forces started an all-out attack on Ukraine in February 2022. Many of Kiev's Western allies wary of bearing the brunt of the war. They are now reluctant to give them advanced weapons and money. Such an attitude of the West has alarmed Ukraine. Lian said Ukraine made excellent and impressive progress. EU Commission supported Ukraine so far with almost 83 billion euros. It is set to receive further 3 billion euros for this year.